Hey, what's up everybody? It's Flux with FluxWithIt.com. Today we're going to check out the audio damage shapes. Now this video, I'm going to basically be giving you some sound demonstrations and kind of give you a little bit of an idea as far as what this module does. But if you want a really in-depth tutorial on how this module works, I highly recommend going over to Audio Damage's YouTube channel and checking out Chris Randall's video on shapes. It's uh, really well thought out and kind of shows you exactly what this module does. When you have it in the lookup mode, it's acting as a wavetable oscillator essentially, and it's using the incoming data and trying to turn that into the wavetables that are set inside of it. So right now I have a sine wave coming from an STG Sound Labs Mankato filter. Um, so it's just self-resonating, and that's how I'm getting a sine wave. And if you look at the O-scope, the top part of the scope is the affected signal, whereas the bottom part of the scope is the dry signal. Uh, this is a Siglent SDS-1202X oscilloscope, um, so we get a really nice view of, of what we got going on here. So as I bring the uh, dry to wet, you'll see how the, the wave shape is now changing. And what that is, is I'm basically morphing through the wavetables on here. It's a smooth interpolation here. If I unplug this, this is my LFO, uh, you'll see that I have a stagnant wavetable happening right now. And as I turn the knob, you get this really smooth, interpolation between wavetables and the parameter one down below that is going to decide just how much of the wavetable I'm getting and then parameter two is going to decide the zero point of that so it's basically like stepping through the wavetable so it kind of sounds a lot like a, uh, a pulse width modulation on some of these things. You'll see. And then of course, as I change wavetables, it kind of gives it a totally different character. Table would be parameter one at max, and then you can just scroll through it. And again, with the LFO in here, I can just kind of morph through that pretty smoothly, which is pretty cool. Now in addition to this mode here, we also have our algorithm mode, and the algorithm mode is a mathematical formula. I don't really know how this stuff works. I'm not a programmer. All I can tell you is that uh, it works a little bit different in that, so when we step through the algorithms, they're not interpolated waveforms. It's uh, just literally changing everything about what it's doing. So. Um, some of them have parameter one and parameter two. Some of them only have parameter two. Let's go ahead and We'll bring this through. So as we, the uh, parameter one is your amount. Okay. And then parameter two, it really depends on what algorithm you're on. So let's step through these a little bit. Again, this is your amount, so I can go from sine wave to this kind of square wave looking thing. And then parameter two is letting me morph between that waveform. So if I put an LFO on parameter two on this one, you can see the movement we're getting out of it. course step through some more back to sine wave here and then as I bring it up 
and I believe that for the most part these things are you know at max you're gonna get approximations of square waves and slight differences there and some get far more extreme than others and I'll show you uh, basically what that can be good for in a minute here. Back to the pseudo sine wave there. Step into this next one. Get this weird little notch in there. Kind of stuff. What I want to show you is how does this thing sound on melodies and drums, okay? Okay, so right now what I'm gonna show you is I have just a regular set of analog drums from the uh, Deltronics Little Drummer Boy 2 going into shapes. And the, again, the, the bottom waveform is the unaffected signal. The top waveform is the affected signal. I have the top waveform, um, you know, I'm using a different voltage scale, so that's why it looks smaller. It's not actually a lower volume. Uh, it's just a, you know, it's just drop back because you have so much extra gain when you're using this thing as a wave shaper. And I'm gonna illustrate that now. So right now we're completely dry and I'm gonna bring up the dry wet mix. We're still in algorithm mode here, which is um, essentially it, it's gonna make a pretty gnarly distortion here. Now let's bring up the amount. Now we are full wet and the amount is 12 o'clock right now. And let's bring it. So in that mode, it's almost like a soft saturation. And then step through these a bit. I'm going to leave the amount at 12 o'clock and step through. Let's bring the amount up. And as you adjust these, you can really get some nice characters out of it. Everything from really, really extreme stuff to more subtle things. Uh, again, this is on a full drum mix here. If you just send it on like just your kick drum or, you know, just your snare, you can really tailor it. Now let's move over to the wavetable mode, your lookup mode. And again, when I bring it to full wet, now you're getting everything is being tried to turn into these wave tables. So it gives it this really crazy distortion. as you sweep through here. 
Now we're getting just a small bit of that wave table, which is cool when you when you cut back the wet dry mix. Let's bring that back up. Again, I'm sweeping through the wave table with parameter two. So again, on drums, when you do it on a full drum mix like this, you really get, you can take it from just like a subtle saturation all the way up to this crazy digital distortion that doesn't really sound like any other distortion, at least not in my rack. So it's definitely a module that will take a simple mix and turn it into something, you know, completely different and pretty crazy. So I would highly recommend checking this out if you want to like morph out drums and turn them into something way more archaic and interesting. Uh, definitely works great for that. Also works really interesting on like plucked sounds too. Uh, can take like a simple plucked sound, like something from Elements, and change it into something a bit more gnarly. So we'll take a look at that in just a second here. All right, so in this example, I'm running elements into shapes, and I just wanted to show you um, just how interesting this thing can get when run on a pluck sound. So let's bring up the dry wet mix. And now we're full wet. Again, we're still in look up mode. get a whole nother flavor. Here's that overdrive kind of. It's nice when you blend it with the dry and wet mix together.
just give us an idea as far as how much it's changing these waveforms. I mean, you can see the drastic difference there. So again, that's shapes from Audio Damage, and I really encourage you to go over to Audio Damage's channel and check out uh, their overview on this module as well. It's it's pretty darn interesting, and uh, I gotta say, if you really want to change the character of the sounds going through your modular, this is a great way to do it to get some really interesting distortions and whatnot. And it's, it also works great as if you just want to send a sine wave oscillator into this thing, it'll turn this thing into a perfect wavetable oscillator for you as well so anyway this is flux of fluxwithit.com peace